Welcome back. Tom Harvin here with you. And uh, on the line with us is Congressman Rick Nolan. It's been a while since he's been on the show, and it's great to have him back. He uh, represents the great state of Minnesota in the 8th District. His website, Nolan, N O L A N dot house dot gov, and you can tweet him at U.S. Rep. Rick Nolan. Congressman, welcome back to the program. Well, thank you. It's a delight to, to be with you, and uh, congratulations. I see you're now rated as the number one. That's the top show in the country. That's a, a yeah. pretty nice uh, thing to have said about you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, we're having fun. Your phone seems to be uh, kind of going in and out here. Congressman Nolan is back on the line. Do we have a phone that works now? Yeah, I think so. How does it sound on your end? It sounds great. Baruch Hashem. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. I really appreciate it. Okay, let's get back to this, this uh, Go to Washington, Go to Work Act. You were saying it's costing yeah. a fortune now. It, 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 Tom, Real democracy is a lot of hard work. And um, back in the 70s, everything came, and, and throughout our history, everything came up under what we call open rules. Uh, in the 70s, 91% of all bills came through committee, came to the floor of the House under open rules where anybody could offer an amendment, uh, have it heard, have it argued, have it voted on. 91% of the bills came before us under that rule. Today, it's less than 5%. OK, um, so um, simultaneously, the uh, my my last my first election contest was probably 250,000. Uh, this recent one um, has uh, was approaching 25 million. OK, my point is, is that the role of money in politics is dramatically uh, changing uh, the way the, the Congress works. Um, you see the open rules going from 91 percent down to five, and you see simultaneously all this money uh, going into politics. Well, what's the connection? Here's the connection. Under closed rules, members of Congress don't have to be on the floor of the Congress listening to a bunch of amendments from other members. Mm. So, for example, we go into session on a Monday. No votes till 630. Oh, isn't that nice? We can go across the street to the Democratic or the Republican call centers and raise money all day. Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, um, you know, there'll be a, a, a procedural vote or two around uh, between 12 and 1. Uh, oh, good, you can go across the street and raise money all day, um, uh, all morning, and then you can go back in the afternoon and raise money. And then, because uh, you don't, you, 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 the members are not offering their ideas for debate and consideration. Right. So members have been relegated to the position of becoming um, you know, middle-level telemarketers dialing for dollars uh, instead of being on the floor of the House arguing about the great issues of our time and listening and hearing everybody's ideas and voting on them. You know, and, co and co I, go ahead. Uh, co uh, Congressman, if I, it, if I could insert an anecdote here real quickly. I was at a cocktail party in Washington, D.C. Uh, with Grover Norquist a, a couple of years ago. And, uh, I mean, he happened to be there. He wasn't throwing it. Uh, but there were a couple, a number of Republicans there, and one of them was a Republican member of Congress. And we got in this conversation about, you know, raising money and all the, and I said, what, you know, he was complaining about it. And I said, well, would you support a bill that eliminates uh, corporate and billionaire money in our political system? And he said, don't tell anybody my name. But yes, I would absolutely support that. And I think the vast majority of my colleagues would. He said, we are wholly owned by these big companies and these billionaires, and it's getting old. Back to you, sir. Well, um, you know, if I understood you, um, I'm in the, uh, but if I understood you, I, I, I think what you said there, you know, he's right. And I, I'm delighted to have a Republican, a young Republican, uh, Mike Gallagher out of Wisconsin, supporting me on this. And I can't tell you how many members have, have said, you know, that's a good idea, but, uh, you know, we're going to need a lot of money in the next election. Right. Um, and uh, so what, what happens is then, the, the Republican most of the Republicans aren't happy about it either, even though they're in the yep. majority. Yep. They all came with ideas they wanted to have heard and considered. Um, and uh, so the, then the bills that do come before us are some combination of uh, partisan positioning designed to make the other party look bad. And, uh, you know, we've always had the areas of disagreement, but it's gotten so bad, it's hard to come together on the things we agree on. Right. Because of the rules, process matters. So your solution um, is? I'm sorry, what? So your solution is what? Well, this, this one of the, there's a number of solutions. Um, 
Um, one of them is to reverse Citizens United to take the, all the corporate money out of politics. Right. You know, that's all dark money. It's distorting truths and and um, it's discouraging people from running. Uh, it's undermining a real democracy. This bill here is is, is a part of a of a broad uh, uh, approach, but I think it's a really important one, which basically says, go to Washington. Go to work on the people's business. Don't go to Washington, run across the street to the Republican or the Republican call center, and dial for dollars. Um, that's not what you were elected for. Yeah. I I have never personally darkened the room of the Democratic, uh, let alone the Republican call center, uh, but I managed to raise enough money to defend myself and get my message out at election time. Mm-hmm. But I go to Washington, I go to work on the people's business. And I think that's what everybody should be doing. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I absolutely agree. So you have uh, um, Congressman Mike Gallagher, a Republican, so, uh, and, and you are introducing this Go to Washington, Go to Work Act. If people want to call their member of Congress and ask them to support it, this is in the House of Representatives, called 202-224-3121. If you don't know who represents you in the House of Representatives, give me your zip code and they'll tell you. And Congressman uh, Nolan, Congressman Rick, Rick, Rick Nolan, who we're talking to, what else can people do to support this legislation, sir? Well, that that would be enormously uh, helpful. Uh, uh, Mike Gallagher and I, we wanted to. Uh, we've been I've been working on it for a while here now, and uh, uh, Mike wanted to review it. He reviewed it. We wanted to get it. Um, uh, out there before this August recess to give uh, the bill a chance to uh, get heard uh, by people throughout the country. And uh, hopefully they'll be calling and writing to their uh, members of Congress and saying, get on this bill. It makes sense. We didn't send you to Washington to become up. And, and by the way, both the Democratic and the Republican parties recommend to their uh, new members and their existing members spend 20, 30 hours a week raising money. <laughs> well, yeah. holy cow. Uh, and you have to have structured rules to make that kind of time available. Yeah. So it's not coincidental that the rise in money in politics uh, p- parallels uh, uh, in, a, in a negative direction the, de- the, the decline in open rules. Yeah. So, and, and oh, by the way, there's another poll that corresponds um, that, that shows as the money has risen, the open rules have diminished. Uh, the uh, uh, esteem or the prestige of the Congress has uh, reached an all-time low. Somewhere, right. uh, you know, below risk. Sir, now. sir, that music Congress. means we're we're hitting a break here. Uh, Con- Congressman Nolan, thank you so much for dropping by today. It's great talking.